Today, our focus will be on Nigeria's rising food inflation and food crisis. And at the end of last week, we did get news from the National Bureau of Statistics showing that Nigeria's food inflation has risen to 40.66% in the month of May. And joining me now to discuss how we can address Nigeria's looming food crisis is an economic analyst, Dr. Samson Simon. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us on Business Daily. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning to you, Doctor, and thank you once again for joining us. Uh, doctor, let us begin with, you know, the conversation around Nigeria's food um, crisis, unfortunately, has been a reoccurring one lately from the Food and Agriculture Organization to even, you know, the authorities here in Nigeria pointing fingers at the rising cost of food. And again, the National Bureau of Statistics has revealed, you know, Nigeria's rising food inflation having risen to, you know, 40.66% in the month of May. So much to uncover with regards to, you know, the food crisis that Nigeria is currently facing. But I'd like for us to understand the root cause. In your opinion, what would you say is the primary cause, the primary factors that are contributing to, you know, food inflation, food crisis across the nation as we speak? Uh, th there are many reasons for the high food um, inflation in Nigeria. Uh, it's more than clear. Um, like I like to quote um, the traders at um, the Dimuta market at the Saleko or Lagos Island, when President Tinubu visited uh, December last year, a Pimbawa, we're all hungry. And um, the, the inflation, food inflation is just going through the roof. It's beyond catastrophic. Uh, is, is beyond crisis level. At 40.66%, uh, nobody can, it's not easy for anybody. Uh, that, that, that is it. And it's more than clear because um, there is no place in the world, and I dare say in the entire universe, where people spend almost 60% of household income on food. It's only in Nigeria. So it's not really affordable for, for Nigerians. And the, the crisis level uh, really calls for uh, uh, attention beyond just stating state of emergency. And some of the reasons for this um, high food um, inflation include um, insecurity, uh, particularly in the food belt of Nigeria. If you look at the Northeast and the, and the Northwest, where more than 80% of greens come from, you have banditry, particularly in the Northwest. And in the Northeast, you have terrorism. Boko Haram is not light enough. Recently, they kidnapped people on the way between, uh, on the way to Meduguri. So the cry, the problem is, is there. Insecurity is a major challenge. Another key issue is um, if you look at um, the subsidy removal, uh, that has contributed to uh, the inflationary pressure that um, uh, food uh, is, 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 is what Nigerians are experiencing, the food inflation, uh, is exacerbated by the cost of fuel. And um, this cost of fuel also has ripple effect. It has also affected many things because inputs have to be transported and even farm produce too have to be transported. Another thing, the, the Ukraine-Russian war, that has contributed to insecu uh, food insecurity in Nigeria. It's been projected that... Um, in this lean month, between June and August, 52 million people in West Africa and Central Africa will experience acute hunger. And out of these 52 million, 32 million are Nigerians, particularly in the Northeast and in the Northwest. So there are a lot of problems. And even the floating of the Nera has also exacerbated the problem. How has it exacerbated the problem? Inflation has been made worse. And even our imports too because some of the tools we use, some of the implements, and even some of the inputs that we use, uh, and even for food that we import, all these things have really gone wrong. So there are a lot of problems uh, for Nigerians because food inflation has really gotten out of hand. Indeed, a lot.
lot of problems as you have you know rightly listed there but there is still much more to come let's go on a short break when we return my guest dr samson simon is still on standby so do stay and you're still watching Business Daily coming to you on Trust TV. And just before the break, we started our conversation on the, Niger, on the rising uh, food crisis across the nation. And of course, we did see data released by the National Bureau of Statistics showing that Nigeria's food inflation currently stands at 40.66%. And I still have my guest with me, who is Dr. Samson Simon, who is an economic analyst. Thank you again, Doctor, for coming on the program this morning. Uh, doc, doctor, let us, you know, continue our conversation. You have listed, you know, a long list, I should say, of the underlying root causes of uh, the rising food crisis across the nation. Uh, you have listed the primary factors that you believe are the cause. But let, let us hear from you now. How significant is the impact of climate change? I know you have mentioned, you know, issues around security, issues around removal of fuel subsidy, and, you know, the Ukraine-Russian war. But the question also is, whether or not climate change has an effect on the food uh, crisis that Nigeria is currently facing? Well, um, there is empirical evidence to, to prove that. It has been proven that um, climate change is one of the factors affecting uh, particularly the availability of, of food uh, within the Nigerian economy. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, the, the floods we experienced, uh, I think, two years ago and 10 years before then, uh, it was attributed to uh, climate change. And another issue is, um, you know, even the insecurity aspect, uh, one of the drivers of uh, food inflation is insecurity. And, you know, uh, the clashes or the attacks on farmers and even for others going looking for for pasture, that, that, that is attributable to, uh, uh, to climate change too. And, uh, you know, because um, if you look at a state like Plateau, you have more than 151 communities that have been sacked. Uh, so these things are largely attributable to climate change as it has been proven uh, scientifically. Uh, well said there, Doctor. I will like for us to touch on, you know, the impact of food imports. Currently, we still are, you know, under the, 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 the challenge, I should call it, of uh, Nigeria's closed borders. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, Nigeria importing food to help mitigate the current food inflation and food security issues? Well, well um, we have been a net uh, importer of uh, food items uh, for a while. And, and the truth is our population is growing at a faster, rate, too fast for us to, at a pace that is too much for the production of food items within the country. Uh, President Bowdy wanted to stimulate um, uh, production of agricultural produce here, and that was why he shut down the borders. Sadly, did not, that did not do much to help because we're still a net um, importer of rice and other food items, and we couldn't meet up even with the production. Uh, we were con at, at, at the time, we were consuming something in the region of 6.7 million metric tons of rice, for example, while we were producing just 4 million. So the difference would have to come from somewhere. So um, it's not just about closing borders, and it's not about banning imports. You have to do the homework here. Uh, what exactly have you done? And, Boosting agriculture goes beyond just credit facility. I know the Anko Borowa's um, scheme really helped with that, but we have to make sure that um, our production is um, technology driven, is data driven. What sort of implements do these farmers use to produce whatever agricultural produce? So uh, th there's nothing wrong with uh, importing agricultural uh, products. Uh, we, we import a, a large chunk of our wheat is imported from Ukraine and other countries around the world, but we have to put in place measures that um, we don't continue importing in perpetuity. And for now, I think uh, we may have to, to allow some imports of, of food items because we're at a critical level. And that does not mean that we should rest because uh, we can import. We need to work assiduously towards attaining self-sufficiency in food production locally. 
Uh, doctor, there has been an increased conversation around, you know, balancing protectionism and, you know, importing in a way that we don't, you know, import so much that our local farmers and local producers, you know, are at the end, you know, feeling the brunt of heightened importation as against patronizing local farmers. So how is it possible that Nigeria should, you know, strike a balance between uh, protecting local farmers and meeting the immediate food needs by importing? You have said that you are not against importation. I'm not. I'm not against importation. Why is necessary, please? And uh, at this particular time, I think it's necessary. Even the government trying to buy food items within uh, to uh, donate as uh, food items to the needy and to the hungry, uh, that, that has really exacerbated food inflation because they are crowding out individuals. If you go to uh, a product, uh, I, I remember the central bank was um, announcing that the, the government buying food items from the markets is, also, is actually worsening things. So there is so much food items within and um, the, the authorities can only buy from what, uh, what is available. And what is available is not sufficient. So we should, we should import where it's necessary. Uh, and at this moment, like I said before now, this is the time to, to, to import while we are working assiduously towards attaining self-sufficiency. Uh, there's nothing wrong with importation. Uh, we should import anything that we feel would have comparative advantage in producing or competitive advantage in producing. And right now, food, item, you know, food items are not some of the things that um, Nigeria can confidently say uh, that um, it, it, it has attained that, that level, that um, it, is, uh, it can favorably compete with any other country when it comes to its production. Uh, about a year ago, or fairly about 11 months ago, uh, President Bola Matinubu had declared a state of emergency on food security. And the 11 months down the line, there hasn't been, you know, so much in the area of uh, ensuring that Nigerians provide what we consume and consume what we provide. But let us hear from you, especially towards, you know, long-term solutions and sustainability around food security. What strategy should Nigeria employ at this point, you know, to achieve sustainable food security uh, as we speak? Well, well, the declaration of the state of emergency um, has not really, really yielded um, anything. Like you rightly mentioned, um, it has been 11 months now, it's almost a year. And, and there's nothing to, to show for it. You, you cannot just regurgitate um, old uh, policies and you think that will actually move the needle. It will never move the needle. It has not been effective in the past, and so far it is not effective. And um, the truth is um, the political will is, is largely uh, missing. Uh, if we want to solve this problem of uh, food inflation and ensure that um, food insecurity is a thing of the past, we, most of us, I think everybody knows uh, what is um, required, but are we really determined? Do we have the will to do it? For example, take insecurity. Uh, we know that the issue around farmers and herders is a major problem. And um, I remember they were discussing it on the floor of the Senate. And some, of, some people think, some Nigerians think that these uh, herders are land grabbers. And they made some recommendation, and some people are kicking against that, thereby stoking that belief that these herders are actually out to get the land of other people. Uh, besides, when it comes to livestock production, we are punching be below our weight. So if, if the, we should encourage ranching, this is the 21st century, uh, people should not be going around with their animals. I know it's, it's a cultural thing, it's tradition, particularly for these people concerned, but Culture is dynamic. You don't become fixated on something that is not working for you and is not working for anybody. Uh, the reason why food of, uh, the cost of food is, is very high is because some of these uh, farming communities, some of these agrarian communities have been sucked. They are in IDP camps instead of uh, being on their farmlands. And people are also afraid to go to, to the farm. But what concrete measures have, have the government taken to tackle insecurity? I think it's largely the same thing. Nothing is really being, being done to, 
to see that um, insecurity. Recently, uh, 70 farmers were kidnapped in Sokoto in the Salaka government. And that was one of the things that the state of emergency was declared that they will ensure that farmland will be safe for farmers. I, I think, and then the state government should not leave everything to the federal government. They can do a lot of things. They collect a lot of money in security votes on monthly that money for you need to tackle insecurity that's a major challenge and then if you talk about our mechanization our mechanization is pretty low we need to encourage mechanization and the government should not try to do everything by itself it should encourage private investors to come in it should use technology uh, this is the information age a lot of technology can be used uh, encourage innovation uh, try to incentivize all these things and it, these things will go a long way. India was uh, considered the begging bowl nation in the, in the 50s and the 60s. They introduced a lot of measures. And largely, India is okay when it comes to food sufficiency now. I think we can take a leaf out of the Indian book. We need to encourage institutional changes, structural changes. We have been paying lip service to that over the years. So we need to be serious about these things. And we'll see a lot of results if we get the act together. Uh, we did hear from the Minister of Finance last week where he talked to issues around, you know, the food crisis that Nigeria is facing, saying that about 14 million Nigerians stand at the, you know, at the, at the, or at risk of, you know, um, of, of being affected by the current food crisis by the month of August 2024. But let me hear from you. You have talked to issues around, you know, uh, the legislature and what the legislature is doing so far. But have you seen, you know, the right policy directions generally now from the fiscal side of government and also from, oh, let's focus on the fiscal side of government for now. Are you seeing the right policy recommendations coming from there towards uh, towards, you know, stopping or nipping the issue of food insecurity in the bud? Well, um, legislation is not a magic one. It, it doesn't solve our uh, problems automatically. Uh, you remember the PIA, it, it was, there was so much hype around it, and it was uh, passed, it became an act from a bill. We have not seen anything. So you can make laws, but the implementation is where the major problem is. How are the executives really committed to uh, solving some of these problems? I, I know that um, some of these things may be a little bit politically toxic. Uh, you, you know, maybe the president does not want to offend some people or people around him too. Uh, maybe a certain uh, section of the population, all these things. But uh, all, we're all suffering because of it. So you need to really uh, be courageous enough and take the necessary actions required we need to work hard on implementation. And um, I've said this, and I'm repeating it now, the government can only go as far. The government should not try to do everything by itself. It should create that enabling environment, encourage private investors to, to come in. And a lot of these problems can be solved. If we talk about um, insecurity, it should not be left to the center. The, the, that's why we need local government autonomy, so that local governments can contribute to and then the state government, and then the federal government. If everybody is firing on all cylinders, I think that will help in ensuring their uh, security. Then you talk about innovation, you talk about technology, you talk about using modern farming practices. If investors can be incentivized. Uh, easy credit sh should be given to these people. Uh, the institutional framework uh, should be provided. And a lot of these things can, can really be done. But um, we're not really, uh, I have not seen any comprehensive strategy towards ensuring that um, some of these problems are tackled so that uh, food inflation can be beaten. Uh, sadly, it has not really been done. It's not about bringing the same uh, policies, uh, the same strategies that were used in the past and have not yielded much, uh, with repeating, regurgitating them. We'll just be moving in cycle. It will not take us um, anywhere. Suppose the situation right now in Nigeria with, you know, how what we have seen play out on, you know, international stages. For instance, we have seen countries like Singapore grapple with, you know, problems around food security. And uh, fortunately, we're able to, you know, manage such situations. So what lessons can Nigeria learn from, you know, 
other nations international, uh, internationally in the area of managing food crises, of food security, you know, despite the heavy reliance on imports? Well, um, Singapore is a shining example. Um, it hardly produces um, uh, enough food for itself. It produces next to nothing. Uh, Nigeria is way better when it comes to food production. But uh, Singapore is one of the most food secure places on earth. And that's because um, the political will is there. Um, Lee Kuan Yew and his successors have been determined to make um, Singapore a success. And they left nothing to chances in ensuring that that is um, done. I think we can adopt the same strategy. Uh, I, I know that um, here in uh, politics, there's a lot of patronage. Somebody has supported you to get the power, and you want to reward a person. But um, we should go beyond just rewarding people and giving them political office at the detriment of the entire population, at the detriment of the country. We should get the best people. I, I remember when um, Adeshino was the Minister of Agriculture, Nigerians consider him the best Minister of Agriculture we have had in recent times. It's not like he helped Jonathan to be elected. But Jonathan thought that, all right, he was recommended and they looked at it and they thought he was the best to study the same thing here, particularly in, in sectors of the economy where we have crisis situation. And even for the ones that are not in crisis mood, we should not wait until they're in crisis mood before we ensure that we get the best people that will be in charge. So that's very critical. If you get the right people and you get the good institutional framework for that, I think that will go a long way in solving a lot of our problems. Uh, doctor, I'd like for you to also speak to issues around price stability, because despite you know, the issue around food security, we've also seen heightened costs of food in, in, in drastic measures. But what can be done you know, towards stabilizing the price of food? Um, is there anything that can be done, especially maybe from the FCCPC, or what are your recommendations towards, you know, price stability? Well, um, price stability is the, is the crux of the monetary authorities. And um, even though in economics we say um, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon, um, the, the truth is this inflation can be worsened by a lot of factors. And in the case of Nigeria, food supply is, is a major reason. If you look at food inflation, it's 40-something percent. Core inflation is in, in the 20-something, 27 percent. So uh, we have a lot of problems. And if you look at food, it's not within the purview of the central bank. So it's the responsibility of the fiscal authorities to tackle that. And I, I feel um, necessary measures can be taken. I, I know they, they always claim that if you bring food and water, uh, within uh, the control of the National Security Council, it, it has not worked. Uh, synergy between uh, agriculture, Minister of Agriculture and Minister of Water Resources, it has not worked. So we cannot continue the same thing and expecting a different result. We, we need something that is more innovative, something that is more compelling, something that is more drastic. We need visionaries to be in charge. It, it has not worked. And um, uh, for price stability to be arrived at, uh, food inflation has to be tackled. And food inflation can be tackled if we ensure food production is at the optimum level. And some of the things we can do to ensure that is by encouraging modern farming practices, by incentivizing people to go into farming, by ensuring that um, the security of life, people should not be afraid to go to their farmland. A lot of things can be done. And uh, we, we should go away from quick fixes. Uh, they have not really worked for us. We need something more far, in, far entrenching, something more uh, serious, something material that can really change things in, in a way that we so desire. Well said, Doctor. You know, especially the area of you know including or including technology in the Nigerian farming process that could help you know um, help our farmers in the area of farming and local production. Thank you, Dr. Simpson Simon, for all the insights that you've shared on today's edition of the program. Thank you for having me.
Well, we have been having an insightful conversation with an economic analyst, Dr. Samson Simon, where he spoke to, you know, the rising food inflation. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's food inflation had risen to 40.66% in the month of May. And this is as we have seen, we have continued to see, you know, issues around the rise of basic commodities, especially food across the nation. We also did highlight how far the state of emergency that was declared on food about a year ago has really impacted in Nigeria, you know, producing food production and Nigeria consuming what we produce. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Business Daily. But join the conversation on social media and let us hear from you how is the current food crisis impacting you in the vicinity that you are? Let us hear from you. My name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.